Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a professional Dirac Live calibrator. And thank you for joining me for episode four of my hot Hi-Fi and AV weekly news. And this is a weekly show where I look at the previous week's news and talk about the things that stood out to me, the highlights from that week's news. And I come on here and I discuss them with you. Now, the big news from last week is that Amazon announced Amazon Music H. D, which is they have higher quality or really CD quality and above music streaming. And it came as a bit of a shock and a surprise. I certainly wasn't expecting it. There was no real build up or any press announcements before it. All of a sudden, it was just out there and in your face. Maybe that was their intention with it. There's a couple of things that really stand out about this announcement. One is Amazon's HD music, which really is their CD quality music, but probably the bit that's more interesting to a lot of audio files is the announcement of their Ultra HD music, which is music up to 192 kilobytes at 24 bits, so essentially high resolution music streaming. When I first saw this news foolishly, I assumed that this was gonna be an add-on or a tag-on to the Amazon Prime service, and I thought if that's the case, then it's pretty bad news and we're probably gonna lose the likes of Tidal, Spotify and Cobars. But in a way, I'm glad to report that that's not the case. Amazon Music HD, after your 90 day free trial, is a standalone subscription service, which will cost about 13 pounds or about 16 pounds a month, depending on whether you're already an Amazon Prime customer or not. Amazon are claiming 50 million tracks at HD quality, and I'm not sure how many tracks they have at ultra HD quality, but it wouldn't surprise me if there was a fair few. Now, Amazon being able to give us this service is not really a surprise, because when you go to Amazon to buy your normal music, whether it be via CD or vinyl or whatever, there's pretty much the option to buy the digital version for every single thing. And it seemed like for about the last year, Amazon's been pushing me at least towards buying the digital versions over buying the hard copies on CD. And that's been actually quite annoying and frustrating, but maybe this is why. But the fact that you can buy all your music from them in the digital format means they've already got this whole library there ready to go. And it's literally just a case of them pressing the on button to give us access to it at their higher quality or the CD quality. And Amazon being the company that it is, must already have a massive network infrastructure in place. You know, as a website, it must be getting hammered by millions of people all over the world. And as a website, it's absolutely rock solid. I don't ever remember the Amazon website not being there ready and fast in response to take my money to buy literally everything. So in terms of having servers capable enough of supplying, you know, a mass market with these high resolution or higher sample files, I can see the Amazon Music HD service being a little bit like the Epic shopping service, I can fully see the Amazon Music HD being just as good a service to use. But is it a good or a bad thing that they have entered this section of the market? I think there is an obvious positive to having a company like Amazon offering this type of service. What I think it demonstrates is a commitment to providing this type of music service to the masses pretty much for an infinite period of time. If we was to lose Tidal, Cobars and Spotify tomorrow due to financial reasons or whatever it is, that could possibly set the music industry back 10 or so years with a retail giant like Amazon providing this service. So long as they're making money from it, I can see them running this for an infinite period of time. And let's be honest here, even if they wasn't making money from this service, I don't think they're gonna sweat it because of the amount of money they make on everything else. But I can't see them running the business like that. But either way, I'm sure they're predicting a profit from this. However, in a way, it does feel like a bit of a, a cheap shot or maybe a dirty move on companies like Tidal and even Cobuzz, really, because as streaming services, those two have had to fight for their place in the market in terms of delivering a higher quality of streaming service. Compared to Spotify, which you can essentially get for free if you want, they've had to really fight their corner and push the quality matters message. And really, you know, after several years of them doing that, Amazon have just stepped in. They're offering what these both do and what they both don't for a cheaper price. The Amazon Music HD is offering CD quality streaming cheaper than Tidal. The Amazon Music HD service is offering high resolution music cheaper than Cobus. 
a lot cheaper actually. And they are offering a higher quality service compared to Spotify for not that much more money a month. So when you break it down, it's actually a very clever and actually quite a ruthless move or ruthless pricing from Amazon to pitch this service here. As it stands, there is no MQA on Amazon that still remains an exclusive thing for Tidal. And will Amazon Music have the breadth and depth of classical music that Cobuzz has? Hmm, that remains to be seen. If those two things are priorities of yours, that is where Tidal and Cobuzz may still have an edge and an advantage. But let's not forget, Amazon HD are offering a 90-day free trial, which is essentially giving users of maybe subscription services like Tidal or Cobuzz a three month payment break while they use and get used to the Amazon Music HD service. Now, I can see a lot of people trying Amazon HD and then just continuing it just because it's easy to do so. But really, I think the big thing is going to be how quickly manufacturers or really app developers are able to integrate the Amazon Music HD service into their existing offerings. Now we've already seen NAD announce that the Blue OS already has the Amazon Music app built in, which is a really interesting one. It shows they're not messing around in terms of offering this service. And I'm pretty sure we'll start seeing a lot of companies, you know, such as Rune announcing that they're adding the Amazon Music HD service. Now, if you want to get access to the Amazon Music HD now, it's actually very easy. You can download Amazon's Music app for either PC, Mac, or Android and iOS. It's a free app to download. I haven't tried it yet, I'll admit. I did download it and had a quick look at it. I haven't tried it properly yet to see what it's like to use, what the user experience is like. And I think more importantly, probably for a lot of you, what the new music discovery aspect of it is like. Because that could be another area where some of the subscription services has the edge over the other. I think that's one of the major problems of the music streaming services. When Amazon announced that they was doing video streaming services, I don't think it would have affected the competition's subscription count, people like Netflix, because Netflix creates lots of its own amazing content. When it comes to music, as I mentioned, Tidal has the edge with its MQA and Cobas may have the edge with its classical music library, but really, apart from that, it's not gonna be a hell of a lot to separate the different services from one another. They're all gonna be offering pretty much the same music choice. So for a lot of people, it's probably gonna come down to value, bang for buck. Where do I get the most back from my investment? And it does seem like Amazon Music HD is gonna be offering the best value. So if you're an Amazon Prime customer, just under 13 pounds a month for this full subscription service is the best deal out there you can get right now. And if you are an audiophile who streams all of their music, having access to this huge music library at CD quality and having access to 192 24-bit files for £13 a month has got to be appealing. Everything else aside, just breaking it down for a second, having a major company like Amazon commit to providing high quality music streaming has got to be, it just has to be a good thing. Think about it for a second and just think of the message that they're pushing and, and the message that they're trying to get across to the masses. They're getting across the message that quality matters. Whether Amazon Music HD is a good thing for the hi-fi industry or not, and whether it's a good thing for the music industry on the music production side of the industry, I think all that remains to be seen. But the underlying message that quality matters and it's worth the premium cannot be undervalued or underappreciated. So looking at the different aspects of this announcement from Amazon really is quite an interesting one. I think it's gonna be a very interesting future now to see how everything pans out across our you know, different staple music streaming services that we've come to know and maybe for some of you, love. And I must admit, I do feel for the likes of Tidal and Cobars and Spotify and, and the others because this is probably the worst news they've had all year. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise and it will encourage those businesses to kick on and try and offer more to their loyal customers and to try and encourage more subscribers to use their service. So I really think the next 12 months is gonna be very interesting. And if you are a heavy music streamer, then this has got to be fantastic and exciting news for you. It can only really benefit you long term. So there's lots of things to think about with the Amazon Music HD service. I think it's gonna make a lot of audio files very happy. I'm in two minds where I think it's a good thing or not, but what do 
you think. Are you already using the Amazon Music HD service? Are you gonna be changing over from Tidal or Cobalt or maybe running the two of them side by side to see which one you prefer and get along with? Have you done any comparisons between one service and the other? Do they sound any different? Does one sound better? than the other. So yeah, get stuck in down below. Let's start the conversation about it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful and interesting. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hitting that notification bell so make sure you get a nudge for when I'm back for next week's episode. Also, don't forget to go and visit our website because we update that regularly with all the rest of the industry's hot news. And there's lots of very interesting videos coming soon that you will not want to miss out on. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Hit that thumbs up if you did. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.